Hi all, it's me Anne from Geeks of Green and today I will talk about the best way according to me to grow your plants happy, healthy and lush indoors. Before we get into this video, I'd like to quickly remind you to follow us on Instagram for plant updates. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, quickly subscribe to this channel as well. Also, I needed to make an important announcement that we are having a separate channel for Hindi videos. This is an experiment that I will be trying out. I hope it works out and we will be posting all our Hindi videos on that channel. I will leave the link in the description down below. So do go and subscribe to that channel if you are looking for Hindi content. If you are looking to watch this video in Hindi, you can head over to that channel and watch the same video in Hindi as well. I will leave the link of this video also, the Hindi one, in the description down below. So the best way to keep your plants happy indoors and to have them growing healthy, in my opinion, is semi-hydroponics using LECA as a medium. Now, why I choose LECA over all the other mediums is because it is cost effective. I nowadays find LECA in local nursery stores for cheaper prices and you get a larger quantity as compared to granulates. Granulates does have some nutrients in them, but that also is uh, okay with LECA when you put nutrient water, which we will talk about in a few minutes. If you want to know more about LECA and also about the other hydro semi-hydroponic materials, you can go and watch my video. I will leave the links for you. You can click on these links and go and watch those videos to educate yourself further. Okay, so getting back to LECA, I would list it as one of my top semi-hydro materials because it's cost effective. It keeps the moisture, it regulates the moisture for the plants. The plants never get overwatered, nor do they, do they dry out completely. So there's a lot of water it holds. The LECA is porous and it gives a lot of aeration. There's oxygen flow, more oxygen flow resulting in healthier plants. There's absolutely no root rot because there aren't any organic materials here. This is an inert medium and no organic materials for any kind of fungal infection to grow. It's absolutely sorted and a very good media I would go with. One thing I like about LECA is that it makes me worry less about my plant. I have to just, if you're a busy plant parent, you can just put your plant in LECA and just forget about it till you have to change the water or you have to top up nutrient water into your reservoir. Till then you don't have to worry. So that is good for busy plant parents. If your schedule is very tight and you still want to keep plants, I think this is a good way to go. There are some added benefits to growing your plants in LECA is you won't have mosquitoes because growing it in water versus growing it in LECA, uh, one major thing that I can think of is no mosquitoes breeding in LECA, which is excellent for people who are li living in urban settings, especially where you have children uh, in your homes. Having mosquitoes breeding can be very dangerous. So. I would prefer LECA to water propagation or growing plants in water at any point. Another benefit of LECA is it's cost effective because it's reusable. You can use it multiple times. It is a media that comes without any form of fertilizer, any form of nutrient that is mixed in it. It's an inert medium and it doesn't decompose. It remains as it is. If you wash it properly, any mi mineral buildup can get washed off also and you can you reuse it multiple times. So that is another way LECA becomes very cost effective. Now, considering that we are using LECA as our medium, the next thing to keep your plants happy and successful within your indoor space is provide it with nutrient water. It's very tempting to just top it up with tap water and, you know, just be happy. I've done that many times, so I'm guilty of that. But take a little effort to top it with nutrient water 
which will really help your plant get its nutrients because it's not getting anything from the inert liquor. It needs a little bit of extra nu nutrients and it's very easy to put your nutrient water in. It's not rocket science. It's not difficult. Once you have it practiced, it's super easy. So go for nutrient water every time you water your plant. Now, there are a few things that you need to remember about nutrient water is if you're having hard water coming in your tap, which has a lot of minerals, it is better to change your water every two to three weeks. The product that I use suggests that you change the water 12 to 14 days, but it's not practically possible for me. So I change the water maybe every two to three weeks. I wash down the roots and I put in fresh nutrient water. I throw away all the old water put in fresh nutrient water. If you're getting really good water in your traps, you don't need to bother much. You can just top it up as the water evaporates. You keep topping up with fresh nutrient water and you don't have to worry. So it's very easy. It's, it's very easy to maintain. Just a little bit of effort from your part will give you happy, healthy, growing plants. So I will quickly tell you how to go about putting this nutrient water. The one that I use is from Green Loop. I will leave the Amazon link for you in the description down below. You can go and shop for it if you want to. So you just have to follow the instructions on the box and use the liquid that they provide in two different bottles to mix with one one liter of water each to make these solutions and keep them. Now, every time you want to change the nutrient water in your pot, all you have to do is take 5 ml from each bottle and mix it into one liter of water. That is all that you need to do. After that, all you need to do is just top up the water or replace the water based on uh, you having soft water or hard water coming from your taps. Based on that, uh, provide the nutrients for your plant and your plant will be happy. That's all you need to do. The next thing that I do is I wash off all my leaves at least once a week. The reason I do that is because a lot of dust collects on the leaves in a week's time. Now, if you live in a place that is considerably dust free, you don't have to bother about cleaning your leaves every week. You can do it as and when there's a, there's a layer of dust on your leaves. For me, I have to do it once a week. So I do it every Saturday. I have kept Saturdays for this one task that I do. I take all my plants, which are in my living room indoors, and I keep them on the platform and I wash all the leaves one by one. Washing the leaves is easier for me than wiping because I have quite a few plants and the plants that I've, I have indoors are not big leaf plants that are easy to wipe, but they rather have smaller leaves, which is impossible for me to think of sitting and wiping all of those leaves. So I just simply keep it under the tap uh, at a tilted angle and I wash it off. If I have to top up water during that time, Saturday is a good time for me to top a little bit of water into the uh, leka as well because indoors the fans are on continuously it's quite dry inside it's not as humid as my balcony so the water evaporates faster so i need to keep an eye on that and do it every week as a scheduled thing that i do lastly one thing that you need to ensure is that if you are not getting natural light indoors ensure that your plant is having at least some artificial light over it somewhere close to it now, when you're keep putting artificial lights, just be careful to keep the right kind of plants under those artificial lights. Don't keep plants that are kept for fruiting or flowering because the kind of light that LED lights give it won't be enough for it to fruit or flower. And don't keep plants that need full sun. Those plants will not survive. But keep low light plants, plants that like growing in the shade plants that like growing in indirect bright light, such plants, the choice of plants is good for your artificial light. If you're getting natural light, you can experiment with any kind of plant that you want. Now, the light is absolutely essential. The one that I'm using in my house is the IKEA light. I will put the details in the description down below. Uh, you can shop for it at any IKEA store. Also, um, Ensure that it is close to the light. If your light is up in the ceiling and your plant is somewhere down on a table, it's going to be useless for the plant. Now, if your plants are on a shelf that is close to the ceiling, it will work. So the distance between the plant and the light is absolutely important. Don't forget that. You can also check on your Lux Meter apps, which you can download on your phone and see how much light it is getting. If it's getting within the range of 1000 to 2000, your plant is sorted. Now, I do not get any light inside my living room because my balcony gets a little bit of eastern sunlight, but 
zero sunlight inside the living room i need to keep my artificial lights on for at least 8 hours anyway i use it to light up my room because my room is pretty dark without natural sunlight coming in so i put it on in the uh, late morning and it remains for on for at least 8 hours even if it's not an intense light keeping it on for a longer time will uh, provide enough light for your plants for them to grow all in all growing plants in semi hydroponics with leka gives me more peace of mind because i don't have to worry about the hassles of soil and overwatering underwatering and what nutrients are in my soil and what bacteria is in my soil what pests are in my soil the plants are generally pest free and they they're more happy more sorted more growing no issues no tensions so this is a hassle free way to grow your plants successfully the only thing i have heard that people struggle with is the a hassle with the pots so hydroponics you need pots that look like this uh, that have maximum drainage and you need a reservoir so it's a little bit of hassle to arrange for these pots you have to pay a little extra to get these pots they're pretty expensive online also and um, to get a perfect reservoir that fits into that pot is another hassle so that may cause a little trouble but once you're sorted with that then the plant doesn't need to budge move and you can grow it happily also the another solution to this issue is using pots that have a lot of drainage holes at the bottom these are normal plastic pots that you get in any nursery and these work fine as well so uh, you can always find a solution to this issue and i'm sure growing in leka will reap benefits trust me try it out if you haven't tried it out yet I hope this video has helped you and encouraged you to go and try semi hydroponics if you haven't and if it has helped you in any way don't forget to give us a thumbs up and like this video it really encourages us boosts our morale and uh, we feel like putting more and more content out for you also subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet hit the bell icon for notifications of videos uh, follow us on Instagram as well and I hope to see you soon in another video till then stay green